and welcome to the Black Cat Bushcraft Channel. Today I want to talk all about buck saws. This time of year in the winter when you're doing overnight camping trips, cutting firewood is a very important task and you have to cut a lot of firewood to keep your fire going throughout the night. In my opinion, nothing performs quite as well as a takedown buck saw for this particular chore. I've got a lot of folding saws that do a great job, but when you're providing a lot of wood for an overnight camp, a buck saw really is more comfortable and more uh, effective and efficient in my opinion to help you cut up that wood. The other advantage to a folding buck saw is the blade is replaceable and it's easy to carry with you an extra blade or two if you desire to do so. And uh, that way it gives you the extra security if your blade should break or if your uh, blade should get dull, you have a sharp replacement on hand ready to go versus a folding saw. It's a little bit different scenario. So today I wanna take a look at three uh, folding buck saws that I own and have used extensively and I feel comfortable with these saws to tell you the pros and cons of each one. It's not my goal to tell you that one is better than the other, but rather just to show you each one, uh, to show you how it assembles, disassembles, show you a couple of cuts with them, uh, give you a couple of tips on buck saws, things that help me in the woods, and uh, let you decide for yourself what looks best, what you might like, and what might be the best buck saw option for you in case you're in the market. So if you're in the market, stick with me, take a look at these buck saws, and uh, maybe you'll pick up even a tip or two along the way. Let's get started. So just a quick tip when you're using a saw, it's always going to be easier to control your saw on the pull than it is on the push. And so sometimes when you're establishing a new cut, it's often easier to get started if you make a few pull strokes like this and get that kerf established. And now my saw is about level with the material that I'm cutting and I can safely go ahead and proceed with the cut. just like that. One. So a couple of pull cuts like that will help you get your cut established just a little bit faster and safer. All right, so let's go in and do a quick assembly of the Spring Creek buck saw. First step is to open up these little side arms here. And we can slide this full blade assembly out. Now I'll go ahead and open this up. And there's a little channel here which I'll slide this retaining screw into this little nut and bolt there. And then this slides into this channel and I can lock it in place. And now we're ready to cut. Now let's do a quick disassembly of the Spring Creek buck saw. And just pop this out just like this. The blade will come out from this little channel. There we go. We fold this back. Notice I didn't fold it all the way yet is there's a little screw here. Has to be positioned just right. And that's it. So not too bad, very quick to assemble, pretty quick to disassemble and uh, have it ready to go back in your pack. All right, let's go ahead and do a quick assembly for the Boreal 21. The one thing that I like about this saw is that it is one assembly and all the pieces are connected at all times and that makes it very fast to deploy in the field. Basically the same speed that you can take out and open a folding saw, you can deploy the Boreal 21. Let's do a quick disassembly for the Boreal 21. You just have to pull this lever out, fold the blade back into the frame, close the handle. Now we're ready to put this back in our pack and we're on the move. And finally, let's go ahead and assemble the stole buck saw. And if you look at the saw, you can see I've got a couple of ranger bands just cut off of a bicycle inner tube and that helps it hold it all together. And I'm also using the windlass cord, the paracord here with that little paddle to help bind everything together. So that keeps the saw together in my pack. So for assembly, just gonna have to remove those two ranger bands, set those aside so they don't get lost. Now I remove this windlass cord. And I'm gonna set that aside for the moment. Now I have these two pieces. So basically where the Boreal 21 was one piece, the Spring Creek was two pieces, this one is three pieces, all right? But being a traditional buck saw, 
it's a different it's a different bird in a lot of ways so all we have to do is insert the crossbar here into these two notches and now it's as simple as applying tension with our windlass all right, so that just hooks over two notches right here on either end and now I just have to create tension with this little paddle now obviously this is going to take a lot longer than either of the other two, two saws that we've looked at but again it's traditional equipment so it's not meant to be as fast to deploy as the others because it's a older school design so to speak and obviously I need to apply a little more tension with this paddle just wind it up a few more times to get the blade tight enough so I can cut but that's it so definitely not the fastest of those saws to deploy but as you can see no problem either now to disassemble we just have to release tension with this windlass once it's loose enough I can remove the cordage from the saw simply remove the crossbar and with this saw you want to be kind of careful here because the blade goes up into the wood See what I mean? You see the blade has to go into that channel, so you have to be careful not to snag that. Now we just would put our crossbar back together. Put the ranger bands back in place to hold this all together. At that point, I'll just use a girth hitch or lark's head, some people will know this as. The difference is subtle in those two knots. And now I can just wrap this up. Slip this paddle underneath the cord. And now once again, my saw is ready to put in its pack. And again, we can be on the move. All right, so one other tip that'll help you when you wanna cut smaller material that might be hard to manage when you're on a saw buck or it might be too short for plumber's vise, this is a nice safe way to cut that material. And all I'm gonna do is prop my buck saw here up against the center of my body. And in my case, I have a fallen tree here I've got my saw wedged in against, but it could be the ground just depending. And from there, I'm gonna use both hands to just bring the material itself up and down on the stationary saw. And that makes a very safe and controlled cut. Some tulip poplar bark there, but a safe controlled way of cutting that smaller material. It works well. There's an old saying I'm sure you've heard many times and it goes like this, compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges. And this is really applicable where it comes to comparing one buck saw to another. There's a key component in that and it is that you have to have the same kind of blade on each saw to truly compare them. If you have uh, one saw that's a 21 inch blade and another that's a 24, then they're gonna feel different in the way they cut. Also, if you have, let's say the same 21 and 21, but one has a green wood blade and one has a dry blade, then they're gonna cut different on different materials. So it's very important that if you're gonna compare one to the other, they all have the same type of blade on them and not one a two year old blade and one a new blade. That's not fair either. The key is to have the same type of blade on each saw. In the case of these saws today, I don't have that. One's a 24, the others are 21s. One has an all-purpose blade, one has dry wood. So that's why I'm not trying to compare one cutting better than the other, but rather compare them on their um, how solid they are, compare them on how easy and quick they are to assemble or disassemble. That's a true comparison for me. Um, so just keep in mind, when you compare one saw to the other, consider the blade, new versus new, dry wood versus dry wood. 21 versus 21 not 21 versus 24 and so forth so to truly measure you have to compare apples to apples all right so let's talk about a few pros and cons of the spring creek buck saw i will say that first and foremost this is the most solid of all of those saws i mean i cannot twist this thing side to side forward and back no matter how i pull on this saw there is absolutely no give it feels in your hand like it's a solid steel frame even though we have those hinges there as you saw this saw locks up completely solid. So of all of them, it is the most sturdy. Um, the other thing I really like is how the blade is tucked down into the frame. You can see that's like one solid tube there. And I like that the blade goes down in there and uh, it makes it very safe in your pack. No chance that that blade could ever slip out or cut anything in your pack or mess up any of your gear. So I like that. Um, 
this saw is probably not as comfortable in my hand as the Boreal 21 or even the wooden buck saw because the frame is squared off as you can see here but when you put on a pair of gloves it's a lot less noticeable with a bare hand like this i can really feel those corners on this saw but it's not terrible and it may be that it's just my hand you might grab hold of this saw and it feel comfortable for you so it's all personal preference um, but it's very comfortable to work with again the most solid of all the saws maybe the lightest i have to show you uh, each of the saws on a scale at the end of this video so you can compare weight but uh, definitely a great option, solid buck saw, and I have no doubts that this thing would last someone a lifetime. And one other strong point about this saw compared to the others is that if you carry it in a pack, it really makes no sound. So even if this thing's rattling around in your pack, it locks up so solid in its uh, compressed state that it, it doesn't rattle. So if you're you know, conscious of noise if you're a hunter and you're carrying this in your pack, that's something to consider that this one is by far the most quiet one to carry in your kit. All right, so let's talk about a few of the pros and cons with the Boreal 21. I will say right off that of all the saws, this one is the easiest and fastest to deploy in the field. I really like that feature about it. Um, it by far, hands down, is easier than the other two and faster. I do like the compactness of this. It is definitely a thinner profile in your pack than say this wooden buck saw so it's definitely a more compact saw to carry um, it's as light as any of the other saws the handle is probably the most comfortable between the wooden buck saw and this one um, one thing i will say about it it's the most noisy so when you're carrying it in the field if noise is an issue this one will rattle more than either of the other two um, but all in all, this is an excellent saw. I like the construction and I love the way it disassembles and assembles uh, for use in the field. So definitely a good option to use, especially when you're going to do a lot of firewood processing. This one's very comfortable to use all day when cutting wood out in the field. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the Nick Stoll wooden buck saw. First of all, being wood may be a strength or a weakness depending on how you look at it. Obviously, wood is not going to be quite as durable as maybe those aluminum frame saws, the metal frame saws. Wood has a tendency to um, swell if it gets wet. It has the tendency to um, be a little bit more affected by cold weather and hot weather, temperature changes. Uh, wood has to be maintained more, so you've got to keep oil uh, on this wood. You've got to take care of the wood. So uh, for me, I don't mind that. I like taking care of my tools like that. But if you're going to just kind of throw it in a pack and take it out and use it hard, neglect it. This saw may be more subject to deteriorating over time versus the other two options. However, with that said, I do have some antique tools that have wooden handles on them that are just as good and just as solid as the day they were made. So it's all about tool maintenance. If you're willing to maintain your tool, then that wood it's not a weakness for you. However, being a wood saw, it feels great in your hand. And again, it's very traditional if you like traditional uh, bushcraft, woodcrafting gear. The strengths for it is, again, the ergonomics of it. Uh, it feels great when you're using it. It's just a very well-balanced and comfortable saw. And this one is a 24 inch buck saw where the other two are 21s. So you do have a couple more inches of cutting power with that longer blade. Overall, I love the saw. I use it often and uh, I recommend this one for sure but it's just important that you understand its limitations or maybe its pros and cons. When you pack it up in your pack, you can hear it makes a little noise. Not too bad, but it does have a little rattle to it. So I thought I would mention that for people maybe that are hunting and carrying a saw into a hunting camp if you're packing this thing. It can make some noise uh, if it gets shaken around. But overall, great saw. And uh, if you're interested in a traditional type buck saw, this one is going to be the right one. All right, so this is a common tip that many people will share regarding using buck saws and bow saws. And that is when you're first getting started on your cut, sometimes people will put their hand right here beside where they're cutting and they'll start to cut. And it's easy for that saw to skip out and come across your hand. And a saw cut is a terrible cut. It's more of a laceration and it's a lot harder to get that thing to heal. Um, one way to prevent that is to simply reach through the frame and the blade of your buck saw and get your cut established this way. At least until 
the depth of your blade is down into the wood and there's a lot less if any chance for it to skip out and hit your hand so just getting that saw cut established reach through that frame and now there's no chance that that blade can slip and hit my hand as you can see here and it's easy to again get that cut safely established and then once that blade is down into the wood as it is here that blade is down in so that there's no chance it's going to skip out now i can go ahead and proceed from there so it's a nice safe way to make a beginning cut all right so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and i hope that it was beneficial to you to see a comparison and some pros and cons for these particular saws that i've shown here in this video if you're in the market for a buck saw i've left some links down below in the description box and maybe this will help you in making a decision of which one might best suit your needs uh, the links that I've left down in the description box do take you to my affiliate page on the Self-Reliance Outfitter site. Uh, and if you purchase through those links, I do receive a small percentage off of that sale. And any support that you provide to me or to our channel here, the Black Hat Bushcraft channel, is always most appreciated. However, if you're not interested in those links, by all means, feel free to shop and use this information to help you in making your decision when you consider the saw that might best suit your needs. I always like purchasing from US-based companies and family businesses, and Self-Reliance Outfitters is a US-based, family-based business, and so I, I enjoy uh, supporting them with uh, my purchases and through this affiliate page. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I appreciate your time and interest. I hope that you'll come back to the channel often. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll go ahead and click that button now, click that bell button, stay notified of all the upcoming videos, Hopefully, there'll be another one very soon. And until that one, take care and God bless.